Right, Let's move on. Lakers, ball. Warriors. Danny, talk your shit. My original prediction was Lakers and six, and since I had this, uh, this, uh, the script, it was Lakers and six. We actually played a lot better than I thought we would, bro. Especially, um, what was the nigga name? Uh, Reeves. Reeves. Reeves sucked. Like the first two games, Reeves was terrible. But the last game, he played really well. Reeves turned up the last like three or four games. Actually, he played very well. Shout out Lonnie Walker. But I think this says more about the Warriors than it does the Lakers, bro. Like, I think that it was pretty obvious that the Lakers were the better team. If you just looked like roster for roster, the Lakers were the better yeah. team. Yeah. This is a lot more about the Warriors and like how they're like bleak their future is looking. Draymond went on this podcast and talked about how, you know, the dynasty isn't over. The dynasty is this. The dynasty is that. Draymond, you're not good at basketball anymore. So unfortunately, it is over. No. But. The Warriors have some really like tough conversations that they need to have in the offseason. Hundred percent. I agree with you, Danny. The there was a report yesterday that came out that said Bob Myers like has no idea what he wants to do, do with the future. Bro, whether this core of whether whether he wants to turn to the future and start developing the Kamingas, Moody's, and Pools of the World, or whether they want to trade that young talent to go and, and try to win with this same core of Clay, Curry, and Draymond. And I'll say it, I think you gotta trade that young core. I think, sure, that young core might have some talent, but I don't think that that young core could ever win you a championship. And I think that your best chance of winning a championship is keeping your big three with Looney and Wiggins and trying to get better role players around them. I mean, I don't think the uh, the young core of uh, Kaminga and Mooney, they I don't think they they're not a championship they're not championship caliber players, even though. You see, you saw a Moody during the Lakers series. He was probably he had good minutes. A high player on their team. He, he had very good minutes. Um, Kaminga, he showed he showed promise. He's been showed promise since he's been in the league, and so I feel like it's more on, um, the Warriors coaching staff and Steve Kerr for playing guys like Anthony Lamb instead of uh, the young guys like Kaminga and Moody. And if that were if that were to be the case, right, for the front office. Why would you keep those players in the roster when um it when you're actually on the court playing and Steve Curry, yeah, he has rotations in. Why are you giving guys like Anthony Lamb and Jermichael Green more of a chance than your young players who got a higher ceiling? Because they had to. They had to. During the regular season, they were out of the playoffs, they were out of the play in. Like Anthony Lamb was playing better than Kaminga for a stretch of the season. He was playing better than Moses Moody for for a stretch of no, the season. No, 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 no. Anthony Lamb had like a two, like he had like a month where he was like actually a very Balling. productive player. Oh, yeah, man, Anthony Lamb. Even was, bro, Ty yeah. Jerome came out of nowhere and was like being a productive NBA player yeah, for the no. first time I've ever seen. Like, and no. and on the flip side, like Is Moses Moody, good? Moses Moody and no. jo- and Jonathan Kaminga were unplayable at times. So it's like yeah. they had to play those players just to even be competitive. Oh, so but, Anthony Lamb sucks, but so you so you give the twenty six year old two play two way player more minutes than your two young guys on the bench. They weren't no. doing anything. They weren't doing anything. Lamb wasn't doing anything either. Lamb was actually productive for like a month, maybe less, but he was he was actually productive for like a month. Miss me with the bro. He was also like buying into the Warrior system. Like when he was on the court, you could tell that he was. He was constantly swinging the pass. He was constantly at least, like, taking the open shots to keep the defense on edge. He was playing good defense. Like, the the, the young guys, they would come in and they would try to ISO too much. They would not play within the Warriors exactly. system. Like, he was playing the ball that Steve Kerr demanded. And, like, if you're a coach, if you're not going to play the system I implement, why the fuck would I play you? Is it, like, then, can we be honest? Yeah, and then he, like, became, like, ass. But, yeah, Anthony Lewis good. He was good for a stretch of the season. Um, but, it, I mean, I just think – I think that you could I, – I don't think the dynasty is over. I actually do agree with Draymond. But that there's a big asterisk on that because there has to be changes. I think Steve Kerr had the quote after the series where he's like, this team maxed out, which is true. I mean, I, like the, this this roster where da- Dante DiVincenzo, although I'm a huge fan of him, where he's getting like 25 – uh, impactful minutes a night where you're still counting on Moses Moody and Jordan Poole to give you like real, real scoring off the bench. Like that wasn't sustainable. And so I, I think the team maxed out. I don't think the core is maxed out though. Those three guys, Kevon Looney, Wiggins, I don't think they've maxed out. And I think if you could trade some of that young talent for some better role players, I think we could maybe see this team compete again. 
That's fair. That's fair. But, like, I think you're completely right because the Warriors are getting up there in age. Steph's, like, what, 35? Clay's damn near 35. Draymond sucks. Like, they got to make a move. Draymond, 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 Draymond had that. Draymond had game five, bro. Game five, Draymond's a real thing, guys. Game five, Draymond. He had a really good game, too. The game where they uh, Looney was out of the lineup and he had to be on AD. Yeah, he was he had fouling, a really man. good game, too. No, no, that was a blowout. Yeah. That was that was fouling. even game. That was even game, Anthony Davis. Uh, even game AD. Um, even game AD. It's a real thing. Um, but I mean Curry's age is, is is something to look at, but I also think he had one of his best seasons ever. Like I think that this he season you could argue was better than his unanimous MVP season. He was hurt most of the season. What? No. But when he played, when he played, he was like insane. Like you remember how he started the season? Like even when they were still struggling on the road, he was averaging like thirty-five on the road, and then he got went down with his ankle injury. But you know Steph Curry's twenty thirteen season, right? It's probably mm-hmm. the most efficient season we've ever seen in like the history of basketball. You don't understand? Oh, it was. It was, but I thought I, I just think like dominance wise, he took over this year. Like I think he was like I think his shooting was so like overpowering for some teams. I mean, I mean that 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 game seven against the Kings kind of just showed like how crazy he can be when he's on. Haven't we seen that for like a decade now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I mean, like, there's not, there's definitely been no signs of him slowing down by any means. 